So let's take a closer look at each of these techniques. So static optimization, also called rule-based optimization, those two things are, are synonymous, um, is based on SQL transformations. And the idea here is that we're, we're gonna rewrite the query in a more optimal way. And some of the examples here are things like removing redundancies, removing inactive subtrees, et cetera. Um, we're also going to try and push down delegation wherever we can. Uh, and we're gonna push down subtrees to the underlying sources as well. Dynamic optimization, as I mentioned, uses statistics and indexes to estimate the cost, um, and is gonna be used also to select the correct join method and the join ordering. So a little bit more detail on rule-based. So the objective here, as we said, is to push the processing down to the data. Um, and we're trying here to ultimately utilize the power and optimizations of the underlying data sources. So oftentimes we're dealing with data warehouses, which are very expensive hardware, typically in a lot of CPUs. Um, and they do things like aggregations and filtering very well. And it's much better to push those um, workloads down to the underlying source than to try to pull all that data back to Denodo. Um, another thing to keep in mind is that this is not a sort of generic SQL optimization. So Denodo is very aware of the vendor-specific SQL dialect. So if we're connecting to a SQL server source, we're gonna create very different SQL statements than if we're connecting to a Teradata source. Um, and even if you have uh, custom functions, we have the ability to delegate down to the functions in the underlying databases. Um, so a simple example here would be, you know, something like a string function, uh, which are standard in all databases. But if you've created your own custom function in SQL Server, we can also leverage that by simply registering that function in Denodo. That's a very powerful capability um, that not many people uh, are even aware of. So here are some of the optimizations that get applied in the rule-based phase. And I'm not gonna read off all of these, but um, you can see here that, you know, the basic idea is that as, based on a set of rules and what we know about the incoming query, we're gonna try and minimize the actual amount of SQL that gets sent down to the underlying systems. Um, we're also gonna do things like transform outer joins to inner joins whenever we can, because it's much more efficient to execute an inner join than an outer join. So let's take a look at an example of, of what, what's going on during rule-based optimization. So here's a simple example where I have a view that I've created called store sales details. And basically this has a fact table and four dimensions tied to it. So it has the date dimension, item, customer dimension, and customer address dimension. So it's a very simplified but common type star schema that we see in the sales and marketing space. Um, so in this case, what we've done is we've pre-joined the dimensions to the fact table so that the end users don't need to know what the join columns are, and there's no ambiguity about how to query these artifacts. So we basically pre-joined them all together so it just looks like an Excel spreadsheet. You can just pick the columns that you need in your particular query. Now here's the query that we're submitting. So basically this is a fairly simple query where all we want to know is what were the total sales and we want to see it aggregated by year, month, and category. So year and month are coming from the date dimension. Category is coming from the item dimension. But you'll notice that there's nothing in this query that references customer dimension or customer address. So the rule-based optimizer is going to look at this query and it's going to execute something called join pruning. And what that really means is that Denodo is going to ignore or prune the customer and customer address dimensions because they're not needed for this query. So even though our view involves five, uh, our view is made up of five different underlying base views, because of the nature of this query, Denodo knows that we can ignore two of those, and now we only have to query these three views. So that's an example of join pruning. So let's take a look at the cost-based optimization and how this comes into play. So as I mentioned, the cost-based optimizer is going to take into consideration additional data, specifically things like view statistics, number of rows, row size for each field, things like that. Uh, but the other component of this is that the cost-based optimizer is actually going to assign a cost to every possible execution plan that we have. So because we have so many different optimization techniques, oftentimes there's multiple ways to solve a given query. And so what the cost-based optimizer will do 
is basically assign a, 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 a finite cost to each of those and then choose the lowest one at the end. Some of the other things that it's gonna take into consideration are what are the underlying data sources? So all data sources don't have the same sort of IO capabilities, block sizes, blocks read per operation. So for example, if we're accessing a MySQL database, um, it's gonna do, execute a full table scan much slower than something like NetEase or Teradata. And Denodo is gonna take that into account. So every single view is not going to get optimized the same way if they have underlying different physical data sources. <clears throat> So some of the optimizations that get applied in the cost stage um, will be things like, what type of join operation are we going to apply? Is it gonna be a merge? Is it nested, nested parallel? Um, and we're also gonna do things um, like, uh, so for example, if, if the two data sets are very large, we're always gonna try and do a merge join. Uh, but if one of these data sets is significantly larger, we might use a nested join. So nested joins are very common when we are joining like, database tables to APIs and things like that. And this all gets handled by the cost base optimizer under the covers. So here's an example, another example of a cost base optimization is uh, something called data movement. Um, it's also, we can also call it data ship join uh, because really that's what's taking place under the covers. And the concept here is that we're gonna move a smaller data set to a larger one. Um, we often see this when we're dealing with aggregations. And it's also important to remember, especially when you're talking to a customer, that this is something that has to be enabled. So we do not turn this on by default because for the large, for the most part, uh, DBAs get very upset when you start creating tables in their databases without them knowing about it. So this is something that has to be explicitly enabled. And the way it works is, first Denoto would query data set one and, re and return that data, and then we'll, uh, bring that data back to the Denodo server and then create a temporary table over in data store two using the data from data store one. And then the final step is we're going to join that new temporary table to the table that already exists in data store two. And then when we're done with the query, we're going to drop that table. Okay, so that's the basic concept of, of data movement or, or data ship join. So let's take a look at what is the cost base optimizer doing in real time and, and give you kind of a real world example. So this particular example is something that I think everybody should be able to explain very clearly to a customer because this is always the one that I go to um, whenever I'm introducing performance to customers. And typically this is the one that the light starts to go on for them. So here's a typical query that we deal with that, that from the business perspective is viewed as a very simple query. Um, here, we basically just want to see what is the average sale by state. So by definition, this query is only going to return 50 rows of data, which again, the perception to the business is that this is a very simple query. The challenge in our case is that the customer and the sales data are in different sources. So what is the best execution plan? And this is what the optimizer is going to decide for us. So option one here is something called the naive strategy. And this is how a typical federated tool would solve this particular query. So our sales table is in one data store, customer table is in another data store. And the way Denota is gonna go about solving this is it's first gonna query the sales database and pull all 300 million rows back. Then it's gonna query the customer table and bring the 2 million rows back, do the join, <clears throat> do the aggregation, and then return the data set. The challenge with doing this is that because we're dealing with an aggregation, we can't even start streaming data to the end user until all 300 million rows have been returned to Denodo. So for the bulk of this query, we're basically just waiting for data to come back from the sales database before we can even do something. So what Denodo will do is most likely one of the next two options. So option two is leveraging the temporary data movement option. So here we're gonna first query the customer table, and then we're going to create a temporary table over in the sales database with the customer data, do the join and do the group by and return the 50 rows of data to the end user. So in this scenario, Denodo is just operating as a query coordinator since we're just moving the data over to the sales database and actually the join and aggregation are being executed in the sales database. The third option is to leverage something called partial aggregation pushdown. So let's say we're not allowed to create this customer table over in the sales database, and this is a read-only data source. In that case, Denodo is gonna fall back to leveraging the partial aggregation pushdown. And what that means is, because we know that ID is the primary key of the customer table, 
And since that's the column that we're using to join to the sales table, we know that we can pre-aggregate the sales table by ID. So even though the customer is asking for the data to be aggregated by state, what we're gonna do is pre-aggregate sales by customer ID, which will cut down the amount of data from 300 million to 2 million. And so we'll just return the 2 million rows from sales that has already been partially aggregated, join that to the 2 million rows from the customer table, and then do a second aggregation by state and return the end result to the user, okay? And here's just an example of the type of performance benefit that you'll see with this. And this is an important slide also to understand. So on the left side here, basically this is a, a BI tool, Teradata, which, uh, Teradata, excuse me, uh, Tableau, which is connecting to both data sources and running this same query in a true federated manner. So it has to pull all the data back, do the join, and then do the group by. And then over here, what we did is we just put Denodo in between Tableau and those data sources. And you can see that you get about a 14X improvement in performance just by putting Denodo between your BI tool and the data sources. And we didn't have to rewrite the query. We didn't have to you know, do anything special or cache any data. Just by having Denodo in between there, the optimizations gave us, as I said, over a 10X improvement, and we eliminated about 99% of the data that has to move across the network. So in summary, the cost-based optimizer is gonna pick the join strategy based on several metrics. Um, the data volumes will be one, existing of indexes, transfer rates, things like that. And then also the Denodo is also gonna estimate costs very differently depending on what the underlying databases are. So if our data source is something like Vertica, Natiza, or Teradata, that's generally gonna give us a very different plan than if we're connecting to something like Oracle or SQL Server. And then we're also going to take into consideration things like what is the data distribution? Can we parallel process these particular queries? Um, and a number of other things, and they're constantly being added to the, to the menu.